Every morning, without fail, my mother made her bed with the military precision of a four-star general. She smoothed and chased down renegade wrinkles and snapped neat square corners. And then she would slowly circle and inspect her work. No one should start their day with an unmade bed, she'd say. I can't recall exactly when she deserted her bed-making ritual. It was more like a slow retreat. First it was just unmade, and then all too quickly, her bed became a disheveled heap. It was somewhere between unmade and disheveled heap that I realized the war with dementia had begun. It was a war that would last for 15 years. In her youth, my mother was a beautiful redhead. People would compliment her on her thick, stunning waves of mahogany hair. During the dementia war, however, all that remained of the lovely redhead were formidable and now legendary trips to the hairdresser. She nearly needed to be held at gunpoint to, be, to get into the car. Who needs a haircut, she'd argue. People used to tell me I had beautiful hair. And shortly thereafter, she'd forget where we were going and anxiously rummage through her pocketbook. I would reach for her hand to soothe her and remind her she loved her visits to the hairdryer, hmm, she'd say, and return to her pocketbook. At the salon, while devouring every last one of the complimentary cookies, dementia oh, never affected her appetite, and shouting loud enough to be heard over the hairdryer, mom would yell, I used to be a redhead. People used to tell me I had beautiful hair, but not anymore. The cookies would spray everywhere, and I would worry that her dentures would fall out. <laughs> I used to be a redhead, she'd repeat, though everyone in the salon had already heard it. Afterwards, she'd give the hairdresser one of her infamous crushing hugs, the kind that just took your breath away. They loved her at the salon. They loved mom wherever she went. Growing up, my mother was the oldest girl, of eight children born to Swedish immigrants during the very difficult times of the Depression. Her youngest sister was a whopping 20 years her junior. So in her life, there were always young children for my mother to tend to. Children with not enough food to eat. Children with not enough heat to keep warm. Shoes worn thin enough to need cardboard inserts. And a father that frequently needed collection from the local bar. My mother loved those children. She absolutely adored all children. During the dementia war, anywhere we'd go, she would chase down strollers for an opportunity to ogle an unsuspecting baby. Kids, keep you out of the real world, she'd tell the astonished parents. Babies in supermarkets were particularly good targets for her because they were seated nice and high in the shopping carts, and she could really get some face time in. <laughs> There was no reigning in her outright joy at the sight of a baby. Kids keep you out of the real world, she'd repeat to anyone who'd listen, and then sometimes just softly to herself. I always worried that the unsuspecting babies might cry, but they never did. The babies would hold her gaze and smile generously, and I would breathe a sigh of relief. Mom was the picture of vitality. She could kick her foot up above her waist and walk you clear into the ground in New York City. She marched with purpose wherever she went, and her stamina was legendary. But she would stall if she came across an unfortunate soul holding a tin cup or living in a cardboard box. Mom's face would crumple, and she'd suck in her breath. Health is wealth, she'd say. During the dementia war, her physical strength barely diminished. She was, seemed completely invincible. But when cold winter night, sneaking past her full-time caregiver, mom managed to escape out her front door and navigate a long, steep driveway away from her home, a home that she had long forgotten was hers. Three feet of new snow blanketed the earth. And certainly exhausted, mom rested in her nighty and pink slippers, expertly flanked by two large snowbanks and completely hidden from view. It was there that she surrendered. A stranger found her in the morning on their way to work. 
wealth is wealth, my mom would have said, had she the breath. You must be relieved, people said to me at the funeral. Relief? No. How can it be that people in their right minds say the most demented things? <laughs> what would have been a complete relief to me would have been if anyone, including a complete stranger, had inappropriately repeated over and over, loud enough to be heard over hair dryers, how heartbroken you must be. How heartbroken you must be.